There are some teams, and I've talked to them, that are vehemently opposed to Tom Brady being an equity partner, being a part owner of a team, and broadcasting games. They simply don't want to have it. They're not going to let him into production meetings. A report came out from CBS Sports Today that says that Fox Sports isn't going to limit Tom Brady on what games he can cover, regardless of whether he becomes a partial owner in the NFL or not. Tom Brady, as you know, is trying to buy a small stake in the Las Vegas Raiders. But here's the problem. Now that Tom Brady is an analyst for Fox Sports and he's going to be calling games, how is it not a conflict of interest if he owns a portion of one of the 32 NFL teams? Let me explain. This year, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman uh, uh, in week one, they're going to be covering Monday Night Football. They'll be doing the uh, 49ers versus the Jets. So they're going to meet with the 49ers and, and players on the 49ers, and they're going to meet with players and coaches on the Jets. With Tom Brady now being a part of the Fox Sports team, and if he does in fact wind up getting a partial ownership of another NFL team, who in the hell is going to want to share information with Tom Brady? I don't care how small the percentage uh, is. You don't want to talk to a member of another team's ownership group. You don't want to share information with them. Why, why would you give up the competitive advantage? You know, if Brady ends up calling the Broncos versus Raiders game in week five, which is a very real possibility because it's a late afternoon uh, game that's going to be on Fox, so it could easily wind up being the Fox game of the week that week. Why in the hell would Sean Payton talk to Tom Brady? They're, they're playing the Raiders that week. And if Brady owns a part of the Raiders, Sean Payton won't want to talk to Brady. No way. How, how would Payton know that Brady's not just going to turn around and give whatever information he gives him? How does he know that Brady's not going to give that information to Antonio Pierce and the Raiders? How, how could he trust that Brady wouldn't do that? You might be saying, okay, well, Mike, I don't see how this is going to be that big of a deal, though. It's just the Raiders. You know, so it's just one team. He works for Fox. They cover mostly at, uh, NFC games. So he's not going to get too many chances to, to c cover games involving the Raiders anyways. That's true, except for the fact that everyone in the NFL impacts one another. So if the Raiders are in a playoff race and they need, let's say, like the Chargers to lose, which good chance that would happen. They're in the same division. If they need the Chargers to lose and Brady's covering whoever's playing the Chargers... Well, he might just help them beat the Chargers. Might just go ahead and give whatever information Harbaugh gives to Brady. He might just turn around and go, you know, here, here you go. Uh, Mike McCarthy or, or whoever's playing the Chargers that week. Here you go. You know, so for that week five game, it's just it's hard for me to picture Bo Nix or Sean Payton or anyone on the Broncos feeling comfortable talking to Tom Brady. I, I could see them shutting him out in that situation. In fact, now that I'm really thinking about it, even if Tom Brady doesn't get ownership of the Raiders, he still might run into that problem based on how close he is with Robert Kraft. You know, if, if Tom ends up covering the 49ers versus Patriots game in week four, once again, very real possibility, 49ers versus Patriots, Tom Brady could be the one covering it. It wouldn't be crazy to me if 49ers players go, yeah, I don't want to talk to Brady. He's just going to call Kraft and, and tell Kraft what we're doing. You know, the 49ers might give uh, Brady the Bill Belichick treatment. They might give him the, the Marshawn Lynch treatment. I'm here so I won't get fined. Look, my, my stance on this Tom Brady thing is this. I don't like the idea of somebody in sports media having a financial vested interest in one of the teams. I know there are plenty of players, former players, and plenty of analysts, plenty of people across the league that have a bias when they talk about sports, okay? Like, any time that Michael Strahan is doing the Fox pregame show and they're doing picks, they're picking who's going to win the game, he always picks the Giants. He never picks against the Giants. Jimmy Johnson never picks against the Cowboys. You, you know, Richard Sherman, any time that he's doing the Thursday Night Football pregame show, if the Seahawks are playing... Anybody but the 49ers, he always picks the Seahawks. The 49ers are playing anybody but the Seahawks, he always picks the 49ers. Like, I, I get it. You played for those teams. But none of those analysts make money off of those picks. None of those analysts make money off of the fact that that team might do 
if, if, if that team does well, you know, or if that team's profitability goes up, if that team's notoriety goes up, none of those analysts have anything to gain from it. It's just, it's straight out of love. It's not business. And I'm not saying that Tom Brady would give a bad analysis just because he's a part-time owner of the Raiders, but it does get weird if he's calling a Raiders game and he's got to be critical of something they're doing. And you go, but you're a part-time owner of the team. How, how come you guys aren't doing this? How come you guys aren't doing that? What do you guys like? It's weird the, uh, the thought of Tom Brady being in the booth, calling a Raiders game, and not being able to, to be completely honest about what, what's going on on the field. He can't necessarily be completely honest about the team. He can't necessarily be completely objective about the owner and, and, and Mark Davis. He can't necessarily be objective about the coach and, and everything else, Antonio Pierce, you know? I don't like the idea of people in the media having vested financial interest, financial something to gain in these teams. I just don't like the idea of that. I don't don't, don't think that that's a good thing. And look, everyone else has brought up the conflict of interest piece of this, which I think is another huge thing that is going to be an issue. I don't I don't like the idea that, you know, Tom Brady is trying to get ready for a broadcast and trying to get ready to, to get up into that booth and say things. So he goes and interviews with both teams. He goes and interviews players and, and coaches from both teams. Meanwhile, now he's learning things about your team that potentially could be beneficial to the Raiders. I don't like the thought of that. Once again, I'm not saying that Tom Brady would definitely use anything he learns to help the Raiders. I'm not saying he would violate that integrity. What I'm saying is I don't like the idea of anybody being in that position. I don't like the idea of anyone having that kind of power or influence over the league. I don't like it. I like my media to be objective. I like my media to be uh, transparent, transparently objective. You know, it's it's clear. It, it is transparent when Strahan is in the pregame and is saying, hey, I'm, I like what the Giants are doing with this, this, and this. It's transparent because we know that Strahan played for the Giants. And we know that he has nothing financially to gain by giving you a take on whatever it is. It's not transparent if he's a part-time owner of the Giants and we don't know where his takes are coming from. Now we don't know, okay, is this take coming from a place of, hey, I got something to gain by talking up this team and making it seem like they're, they're a lot better than they actually are because now you guys are going to buy more gear, more stuff's going to sell. Do I do I got something to gain from spinning a story a certain way? You know, I, I don't like having to wonder that. And that's why I don't like this whole Tom Brady, the, the possibility of Tom Brady being a partial owner while simultaneously being up in the booth every week. But let me know what you think in the comments section. I do reply to as many comments as I can because I love talking football. So if you post what you think, I will do my best to get back to you. Also, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, help the channel grow, all those other things that YouTubers say, you know, hit turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything. And I will catch you guys next time. Later.